Hello everybody, it's Crystal Laura, and these two devices used to be very similar in past years, but in 2015 they couldn't be any more different. With the V10, we have some more traditional features that us in the Android community have come to love, while the Note 5 totally refreshes these ideas to help it compete in its market. Yes, both phones are great, but each come with its own huge trick up its sleeve. So, which is the phone for you? Two contrasting designs is probably going to be the area where most users will immediately know which phone is for them. And no, I'm not talking about the beauty of each phone's design, more so the functionality that each design provides. Samsung's Note 5 is much different than its predecessor, with the battery now being sealed in and unremovable thanks to its glass backing. This glass backing also makes for a tougher time managing microSD card support, so Samsung decided not to bother and remove this feature as well. Now having said all this, the Note 5 is a very beautifully designed phone. It's is much more appealing to look at now and even feels quite good when holding. With pretty small top and bottom bezels, some almost non-existent side bezels, and the curved glass backing, the Note 5 feels pretty nice to hold even with this big 5.7 inch screen. However, that glass can make the phone feel very slippery, making it even more prone to drops and falls, but either way, you'll have to ask yourself if the lack of removable battery and SD card slot is worth this new beautiful design. However, with the LG V10, you don't have to worry about any of this. The V10's backing is removable and home to a 3000 mAh battery that you can swap out for another when you're on the go and without access to a wall outlet. Also, this removable backing allows users to access the microSD card slot that supports up to 200 gigs of storage. So in terms of functionality and the freedom each phone gives its users, the LG V10 is no doubt a winner and it's going to give you a much more reliable experience if you do indeed make use of the SD card slot and stock up on batteries. But when it comes to the appearance of the phone, there is a price to pay with phones that have removable backings. The LG V10 is a full millimeter thicker than the Note 5 and 21 grams heavier, but still both phones are quite thin and light, so this shouldn't make a difference for most people. Usually we would say phones with removable backings will never compete aesthetically with a phone that has a unibody design, but with the V10, LG found a way to keep this phone versatile yet very sleek looking. You won't find any fake leather or straight up plastic, but instead a rubbery textured pattern that is called Duraskin. This silicone-like material not only looks nice and feels nice, but it helps make the phone one of the most comfortable phones to hold. It's very grippy and you shouldn't ever worry about having the phone feel insecure in your hand. That's something you couldn't say about the Note 5. If this extra grip added to the V10 isn't enough and you do manage to drop the phone, the skin helps absorb the impact of a drop and can hold up to most scratches. On top of this, the V10 sports an SAE grade 316L stainless steel frame that also plays a big part in keeping the phone from showing those nasty scratches. All of these features come together to give the LG V10 a military certified shock resistant rating of 810G. Its build quality is very impressive to say the least. This 5.7 inch phone definitely takes the cake over the Note 5 when it comes to design, even though aesthetically it's up to personal preference. Both devices make the most of the technology they use when it comes to display. You're not going to find a better IPS display or a better AMOLED display on the market right now when it comes to smartphones. The LG V10 has a 5.7 inch Quantum Quad HD IPS display, while the Note 5 has a 5.7 inch Super AMOLED Quad HD display. Both displays make for a fantastic video watching experience or any type of media consumption for that matter, but you're going to love either display as they are the best of their class. While the V10 uses an IPS LCD panel where a single backlight shines through to light up the screen, the Note 5's pixels individually light up to allow for dark areas to shut off, creating true blacks for a more immersive experience. That being said, the V10's display is still quite good and really outperforms most LCD panels when it comes to displaying blacks. They're really dark here too, but of course not as much as the Note 5's. Really the Note 5's display is no match for any smartphone out there right now. If you want the best Quad HD display in a smartphone, you're looking at the clear winner right here. Sure the whites may be a little warmer than the V10's, but the colors are much more vibrant and really pop. Almost too much I would think for some people but you can always change in its settings. And when comparing photos side by side, you're most likely going to prefer the more saturated colors on the Note 5. But it's worth noting that the Note 5 takes better advantage of its screen by decreasing the DPI to 560 to fit more onto the screen. You'll notice the icons and words appear larger on the V10 thanks to its DPI set at 640, which is a little unfortunate I think as things appearing on the screen unnecessarily take up much more room. While LG manages to make the best IPS display, Samsung managed to make the best AMOLED display and most will find AMOLED to be a clear winner here. 
Now while we're talking about displays, let's talk about the crazy tricks these two devices have up their sleeves, starting with the LG V10. Yes, this phone has two displays, the one we just talked about and this much smaller one that sits at the top. It's an entirely separate screen and only takes up about 70% of the width of the main screen, ending when it comes to the front facing cameras. This little display is great for displaying notifications in full detail without taking away from the main screen. You can also set up app shortcuts to launch very fast and are accessible at any time within the majority of of apps. It's a little strange, yeah, but it's definitely helpful. Also, while the main screen is off, the second display stays on, displaying notification icons so you can always see what you've missed from a distance. It kind of reminds me of something similar to a motor display. But of course, this may be a little gimmicky to some people, and so far, while I do think it's an interesting idea, I haven't been able to justify the extra space it takes up over its functionality. When it comes to the Note 5, we have the beloved S Pen that sits comfortably in its port on the bottom right of the phone. Simply push in and the pen will spring out with nice haptic feedback. If your screen is off and you do this, you'll be greeted with a black drawing board where you can easily take down notes or draw pictures. This is extremely helpful when needing to jot down an idea on the fly without unlocking your phone and going into an app. And when you're done with your note, simply push the pen back into its cradle the correct way and your note will automatically save and the screen will shut off. And while the phone is on, we can have even more fun with the S Pen, like of course drawing on the screen which is helpful for sending instructions. Users can also crop areas of images to send to friends or coworkers and even capture long images in one screenshot. There's all sorts of features like this when it comes to the S Pen, really making the Note 5 feel more like the go-to phone for getting work done. Both phones have fingerprint scanners and I'd say both work just as well as the other. The Note 5 is located on the front which is great for trying to unlock the phone when it's sitting on a desk, but when holding the phone it's going to be a little more awkward than the V10 scanner that sits on the back. And while they're both fast and reliable, they're not as fast and reliable as a scanner that you'd find on the new Nexus phones. But they really work great though and work equally as well. When it comes to normal hardware features, like speakers, both phones place theirs on the bottom right, which makes them easy to cover up, but the LG V10 speaker is much louder, and although neither has fantastic sound quality, the V10 is able to offer better highs, making for an overall clearer and brighter sound. Now when plugging in headphones for real audio listening, the LG V10 is also the winner here, since it supports 32-bit Hi-Fi DAC audio from ESS Technology. Internally, the LG V10 sports a Snapdragon 808 processor, while the Note 5 goes with an Exynos 7420. Both phones have 4 gigs of RAM, and while the V10 only comes in 64 gigs of storage, the Note 5 has 3 storage options at 32, 64, and 128. But remember, you do not have an option for expandable storage here. When throwing both devices through Geekbench, the Note 5 performed with much higher results at around 4,700 points over the V10's 3,500. Although, Antutu scored the V10 a little higher by about a thousand points. Both the V10 and Note 5 are running Android Lollipop 5.1.1 with their own pretty heavy skins on top. Visually, they appear to be very similar with simplified notification pull downs and quick shortcuts that you can customize. Both are capable of dual window support, which is great given the big 5.7 inch displays found here. And launching apps on either device is quite fast, although even with 4 gigs of RAM found on both devices, the Note 5 still seems to not be able to manage its RAM as well as the V10s. Apps in the recent app screen seem to reload much more often than the V10 or even most phones I've used. And on certain occasions, my Note 5 would stutter or freeze for a couple seconds when I'm not using the phone for a while. However, gaming on the Note 5 does seem to be a better experience in terms of load times and frame rates, but the V10 is not too far behind. That being said, both phones deliver unique and for the most part good software experiences, but I'll lean a little more towards the V10 as it seemed to be the most reliable in my weeks of testing. These two phones have some of the best cameras on the market right now, so whichever one you choose, you're going to fall in love with either camera. But that doesn't mean they take similar pictures. They're both great, but in their own unique ways. Both are 16 megapixels, with the LG V10 having a slightly faster aperture of 1.8. And both do have optical image stabilization, but the V10 has laser autofocus, and in testing actually does focus faster than the Note 5. So let's get down to those pictures. Outdoors, both cameras perform exceptionally well with little differences from each other. The Note 5 has a bit more contrast and color to the images, which does come down to personal preference, but I think that extra boost from the post-processing is quite appealing in my opinion. Although yes, this does mean you will lose a lot of information in the darker areas of the photos. Colors are more towards the warmer side with the Note 5, while the V10 is a little cooler with less saturated colors, often capturing a more accurate representation of the scene. That doesn't mean this camera is necessarily better or worse than the Note 5. It all depends on how you're going to be using these photos. If you want to quickly snap a beautiful photo without having to tinker with any settings, you're going to love the vibrant colors 
produce higher contrast and sharper images on the Note 5, especially since the Note 5's camera launches much faster than the V10's and the picture is immediately taken when you snap that shutter button, every single time. The V10's has trouble sometimes, mostly in darker areas, and you may have to wait a good 2-3 to three seconds until it actually takes a photo. However, if you want a more accurate and realistic photo with lots of room for editing, the V10 is going to be your best bet. With optical image stabilization, your videos will be a lot smoother than usual, with the Note 5 having a bit more shake to it. The V10 decides it wants to focus more often than the Note 5, but when it does, it does it a lot faster with this laser autofocus. However, the V10's video is in a totally different league than the Note 5, or really any phone for that matter, with its full manual controls. It's very similar to the controls in manual photo mode, except with a few new additions, including a stereo sound level to view audio and an audio controller where you can tell the V10 if the audio is coming from behind or in front of the phone to help with some noise cancellation. The front facing cameras on these two devices are great in their own ways. The Note 5 has a single wide angle lens that helps with getting everything in the shot, while the V10 has two selfie cams, a wide angle lens and another that is able to get a closer shot. And the V10's wide angle lens is super wide angled, which creates a more fish eyed look. It's able to get a lot more in the frame and really is incredible and fun to have on a smartphone. Once again, the Note 5 creates a much more contrasty image with lots of post-processing to reduce noise. The V10 shows lots of artifacts even in the brightest of light but still looks good. And in low light, the V10 is a clear winner. Even with a lot more noise and a darker photo, the V10 creates a crisp image with much more detail over the Note 5's almost airbrushed look. Both cameras are a close match, but with the V10 having much better video quality, video features, better front facing camera, and more realistic photos that photographers will love, I would pick the V10 here, just by a hair. And really this will come down to preference as they are just so close. Finally, when it comes to the end of the day, which phone is going to need a charge first? Well, both phones carry 3000 mAh batteries inside of them. However, the Note 5 seems to last the longest, which is no surprise as the Note 5 has some of the best battery life for a battery of its size out there right now. For my normal usage, I manage to get around 4.5 hours of screen on time and for me that's more than enough for a full day. The V10 lasts me a little less, getting very close to 4 hours, but not quite making it usually but still that can last me an entire day most of the time. You do have to keep in mind though that the V10's battery is removable, so you could always have an already charged one in your pocket to swap out on the go. However, both phones are capable of fast charging. Overall, it's going to be a tough decision to make, and like I said at the beginning of this video, you're probably going to be convinced by one of these devices depending on their design language. Are you a person who takes advantage of removable batteries and micro SD card slots? If you are, the LG V10 is definitely the phone for you. And if you're not, still the LG V10 seems to do the majority of the things that the Note 5 can do a tiny bit better. Slightly better camera, slightly better performance and RAM management, much better audio, and much more durable. And of course, the removable battery and micro SD card slot can help even for those who don't perceive it as a main selling point. Sure, the Note 5 screen is slightly superior and overall has a much more beautiful and premium design, but with the freedom users can have with the LG V10, it's most likely going to be the one that most people would enjoy more. Well there you have it, the V10 versus the Note 5. Thanks for watching as always, comment below and let me know which of these two phones you prefer. Also check out these other cool videos on the side here and don't forget to get our Android Authority app and the Google Play link up there. And last but certainly not least, head on over to androidauthority.com for the more full in-depth comparison because we are your source for all things Android.